Spirit Halloween the movie is a 2022 film about the titular Spirit Halloween pop-up megastore, a store that sells Halloween props and is infamous for its awesome animatronics and creepy themes. Every year, people of all ages come to this store to indulge in some awesome Halloween goodness. The film stars Donovan Colin, Jaden J. Smith, Dylan Martin, Marcia Reyes, Rachel Leah Cook, Billy Roy, Christopher Lloyd, Alea Calloway, and Marla Gibbs. Now, I just want to let it be known that this film is full of references to not only Spirit Halloween, but horror films in general. It's just more like a goofy satire of those horror films with obviously a lot of Spirit Halloween ad placement because obviously this is to market their store and to get kids and adults away to go to said Spirit Halloween stores. Also, this film is full of references upon references upon references to different aspects of Spirit Halloween. Not just the Spirit Halloween Reaper's Haunted Factory theme from last year, but rather just Spirit Halloween in general. There are references to older themes and even characters within the film like, a lot of trick-or-treaters you'll be seeing in this film because it takes place on Halloween night. But a lot of the trick-or-treaters in this film that kind of appear in the background, trick-or-treating on the street and everything like that, they are actually wearing costumes that you can go to Spear Halloween and buy. Like, the werewolf costume, as well as various masks from Spirit Halloween appear, not only being worn by actual trick-or-treaters in the film, but just as decorative pieces in the main character's uh, bedroom, as he is a huge horror fanatic. Now, I'm sure most people going into this movie want to know the animatronics that actually get haunted in the film. Now, granted, every animatronic that appears in the Reaper's Haunted Halloween Factory theme from last year appears in this film. However, not all of them become possessed by Alec Windsor, the spirit that is possessing the animatronics, which kind of sucks that it's a human spirit. I kind of figured it would have been like Jack the Reaper to teach the kids a lesson to enjoy Halloween more, but whatever. It doesn't matter. The animatronics that get possessed in this film are Mr. Dark, Nightcrawler, and Buzzsaw. There are two new characters that are made explicitly for this movie, and those are a fortune teller animatronic named Zolderena, and there's also the Teddykins of Terror. These are new characters that have never ever appeared in any of the stores and are exclusive to this movie. Not to mention, just issuing a quick spoiler alert warning, in the movie's third act, uh, one of the main characters actually becomes possessed by Alec Windsor, and Alec Windsor uses his powers to control a bunch of just random animatronics. It's so hard in this particular scene to see who everybody is, but it looks like there's the, uh, the jump scare scarecrow prop and a couple of other like animatronics it's really hard it's because it's just so fast paced and that's something you'll find about this movie but there are a bunch of random animatronics that become possessed in the movie's third act i should also bring this up before i forget there are two other animatronics that are briefly possessed and i guess you could also say that buzzsaw falls into that category sorry buzzsaw fans but he only is possessed for like what, like five seconds, but there are also a, a skeleton gets possessed, and no, it's not grim, it's one of the just basic, um, smaller skeleton props that basically spirit charges way too much for, and then the empty soul girl also gets possessed, however, she doesn't really do anything, she just kind of wakes up and just stands there creepily looking at our cast of heroes. 
And then at the end of the film, during the aforementioned army of animatronics that Alec Windsor brings to life while possessing one of the main characters, she briefly appears again, just coming out of a box and uh, just looking all kinds of crazy. Now, when it comes to a more critical side of the film, there are some things that I'd like to state here that I didn't like, and that is that in one particular scene, uh, during the Nightcrawler chase scene underneath the store in the kind of secret cave area that the kids discover, uh, Nightcrawler chases the kids out of this area, and one of the kids actually trips on a kind of uh, upper level, uh, like like a kind of a angle of rock while he's running. But the way he trips is like so unbelievably faked that it's just so noticeably bad. And it just stands as a reason for um, Nightcrawler to have more screen time and be up in the character's face. But other than that, it's it's... It's, it's still pretty decent. Um, there's also the stuff with the animatronic effects. Some of the animatronic effects are noticeably really bad, and you can tell that it's just a guy in a suit, you know, being all creepy. And even the effects for the ghost in the film, Alec Windsor appears throughout most of the film as a glowing blue light. It looks really fake. But these are about the only negative things I have to say about this film. For the plot of the film, it's pretty simple. Um, one of the main characters is just kind of being grumpy because he thinks he's too old because uh, he has um, hair on places. And they really talk about this a lot. In fact, characters joke with this particular character about it. But he doesn't really want to go trick-or-treating with the rest of his friends and kind of acts like a, a douche about it. And um, so they decide to do something else for Halloween rather than trick-or-treating and dressing it. So they decide to go to Spirit Halloween and spend the night there. You know, 24-hour Spirit Halloween challenge. Spooky, right? So they go there and they mess around and, um, and basically uh, like steal a bunch of shit. And then the store starts to become haunted by Alec Windsor, who is basically kind of an urban legend in the town that they live in. And so he starts possessing all these animatronics. And so the kids, now they've locked themselves in a store. Nobody's around. And they, this store is like in an abandoned part of town. So they basically have to survive the entire night. Some Five Nights at Freddy's style shenanigans ensue. Um, and basically the whole movie from this point is survive the animatronics while an old grandpa possesses them and just uh, chases the kids around trying to kill them, trying to possess them and, you know, go back to living his life. And that's the movie. Uh, the spirit is banished in the end of the movie. He's kind of exercised, I guess, or laid to rest and the movie ends. The kids, you know, learn valuable lessons um, and just kind of the, their friendship becomes better and end the film. Uh, there is an inkling that Alec Windsor will return in a potential sequel, hey? But uh, the movie, I've I got to be honest here, the movie wasn't the best. In fact, it was really extremely fast-paced, so it's really hard to kind of uh, keep up with everything that's going on. But I wouldn't say it's the worst movie. It's just kind of a fun Halloween movie. But... If you want something, like, really special for this movie, it's really not going to be your kind of movie. It's just a generic, fun, zany Halloween movie to watch with your friends on Halloween night while you get uh, hammered on candy and get that sugar rush. But I thought it was an alright movie. I enjoyed it. I was super hyped up for it. And uh, my boy Skullcrawler, oh, he got toasted, but... Anyway, let me know what you guys all thought about the Spirit Halloween movie. Were you hyped up for it? Did you enjoy it? Let me know all this in the comments below. And with that being said, happy haunts, and I'll see you in the next frightfully fun Halloween video.